today's uh, topic is what's in 9.4. We just released that recently in the last month or so. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, if you have questions, uh, you can save them to the end, or if it's something you know really, really urgent, you could just jump in. Um, so some of the highlights uh, are new, new feature and functions within 9.4. Um, in the reports area, um, let's just go right down the list, and I'll show you what each of these look like, which means I'm going to be jumping back and forth between the uh, presentation and the, and the real product here, so bear with me here. Uh, so cost field in UM chargeback reports. So essentially, either of the um, user detail or group detail reports um, are used for uh, generating um, chargeback reports. And so I'm just going to do an example of what that looks like here. So this is MATLAB, as uh, you probably know. And these are all the people that used MATLAB in this seven-day period that we've selected here. And it automatically calculates out the percentage of total here. And if I want to plug in a dollar value, I can just plug in, let's say it's $10,000 for a MATLAB for all these seats. Um, and all I got to do is submit that. And so now I've actually allocated the $10,000 across uh, all my users. So that's that's essentially what, uh, what we're, we've been built into uh, 9.4. <coughs> is the ability to allocate actual costs across users. <clears throat> 9.4 does it for uh, user detail report, um, and somehow we missed the group detail report. So we're going to do the same thing later on uh, for group details. So, But today, what you get in group details is uh, the percentages. And so if I do MATLAB, for instance, I get my percentages here of total. Um, and I can export this to Excel and, and use that uh, to, to, um, against the cost factor, and I can get my cost, but I'd have to do that offline in Excel. Uh, but with 9.4, you can do that online for your user detail report. Makes doing chargebacks um, perhaps a little more meaningful if you can actually allocate the costs. <laughs> So um, current license inventory reports in LAM include tool quantity, um, essentially current license inventory in LAM includes tool quantity. So we're going to go back over here and look at the, um, the LAM tool quantity here. So what was that again? Let me just go back and see what that said here. Current license inventory reports in LAM includes tool quantity. Current license inventory report. Oh, that's that's not LAM. That's the usage uh, current inventory. So let's just take a look um, at the details. So I guess it's showing the capacity now in LAM. Alfred, am, am I missing something here? Where, where, where would that? I looked at that and I saw where that was. Current license inventory. Reports in LAM include, oh, I know where that's at. Bear with me here. Uh, so I'm going back over to the LAM side, and I'm looking at my reports. So what this is saying is any of my current license inventory reports now include a, a total quantity. So this field was not there before, the quantity field. So we've added that to all of the reports. Any one of these reports now that you want to look at, um, it's going to have the quantity field for your current license inventory, and that's on the LAM side. Um, test batch report button. So, again, this is on the UM side, on the monitoring side of our tool. <clears throat> and if we go back over here to um, usage and batch reports, uh, so we've added a new button over here. It's called test. And it allows you to, you can put in a, a new batch report. And if you're not sure in the past, you had to wait a week or a, a month or whatever to see if it worked. But now with the test button, you can actually test it. In my demo, we don't have this set up. We don't, it's not a real environment here. So when I click test, it's going to give me some error message here. But essentially, that test button is going to go try to generate that report uh, real time and see if it works. So. 
that should be useful to verify that your batch reports are in fact working. Uh, combined feature reports for up to seven tags. So if you recall, a combined feature report is where you have multiple, you have the same feature on multiple license servers. So in our demo world here, uh, we actually have, um, we go to the combined feature graph, it's going to go and find out what uh, demons are running on multiple, same demon running on multiple license servers, and it'll come back and show me uh, the uh, demons that are on multiple license servers. Come on, baby. Usually it doesn't take that that long, but in this example, we have MATLAB running on multiple license servers. I don't know why it's taking so long, but essentially in the past, you could have up to five license servers worth of information in the combined feature graph. Now you can have up to seven servers uh, in the combined feature graph or table for that matter. You have both the combined feature graph as well as the combined feature table. Well, for some reason that's not working in my demo here and I don't know why. So let's skip over that. But if you have a need for the combined feature report, again, that's if you have the same tool running on multiple license servers, you can actually show in the same report up to seven servers, seven tags in one report. Um, the next feature is the token sum feature. So this is applies mostly for uh, MSC, MSC software, Patran, Nastran, Campus, where they have a, a number of sub features. So we're monitoring the sub features and we can roll up the tokens um, at the campus level now. So if you had need for if you have a need for FlexLM token reporting, uh, this should be uh, a little more useful if you have sub features. Um, the next one in the reports category is the history graph smooth average line. That's pretty easy to show you. Um, so we go over here and generate a general graph um, for any of these tools. You're now going to see instead of a, we, we used to have a sort of a binary thing that would go up and down. I don't know why that's but now you see it's a smooth line here. It's a little nicer than the uh, the old traditional. Um, if you want to see the squared, the old squared version, you, you could click on that, hit submit, and it would bring back the old square uh, version of the uh, averages line instead of the, the smooth version. So moving right along here, that's the history graph. On the alert side, um, for your renewal alerts, um, you can send it to just the responsible person. So that's a LAM feature. So let's go back over to LAM. Um, and you know, in LAM, you can have the name of the responsible person here. And then uh, under settings, if you want the alert, the uh, expiration alert, which is tied to this date here, if you want the expiration alert only to go to the responsible person, you would go over to your settings tab and um, I believe it's under change settings here. Nope, it's not there. Oh, it is, it is right here, I'm sorry. So it, it's that one right there. If you enable that, right now it's disabled, which means everybody who has alert, uh, let me go back here and show you what I'm talking about here. So all of these people have email alerts checked off. So if you have under your settings tab, uh, this is set to disable. Everybody that's checked off is gonna get that alert. But if you have this enabled, then only the responsible person, only the person that you have listed as a responsible person is gonna receive the alert for that line item. So hopefully that's clear. Um, the line item, of course, being over here, responsible person will only get the expiration on these particular line items that are in there uh, under their responsibility. So that could be very useful to you. Um, back over to here, the next alert, imp 
that's the improvement is the license expiration alert with expired licenses option. So again, that is a UM feature, I believe, usage monitoring feature. And if we go to uh, the alerts tab and we come down to expiration alerts, um, that you have this option, which wasn't there before. Please select this box to add expired licenses in the email alert. So uh, in, the, in the past, it would only send you um, alerts on the ec upcoming expirations. So if you have this checked, then it would send you an alert on anything that's already expired too. I mean, I think that may be useful to you. Um, just to make sure that you've, you haven't got anything expired there. You probably know about it before then anyway, but that's what, the, that's what that is. That's called license expiration alert, expired licenses option. Long checkout alert, uh, really nothing to show you here uh, except to say that in the long checkout alert message, uh, it would include the host name as well, <coughs> as well as the uh, username and the host name being the machine that they're using it on. <coughs> Um, the next one is the queued licenses now in current in, in um, checkout overview. So we're picking up queued license information and we're reporting that in the current overview and in the uh, checkout detail report. Let me show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so let's go over here and look at the current overview. So you'll see now that there is a reserve column, which we've always had, and now we've added the queued licenses column. So you'll see the number of queued licenses as well as... Uh, what's actually checked out, if there are any. <laughs> that queued license information, by the way, is coming from the LM stat. It's not coming from a, a license uh, or a, a job queuing system of some sort. We're not linking to LSF or any of these other tools. This is, this is the queued license information coming through LM stat. And we're reporting that both here in the overview um, as well as in the details. So if I drill into, let's say this MATLAB, uh, you have a column here for the borrowed uh, and queued licenses as well. So this is new. If you were interested in knowing, you know, what licenses are, you know, um, queued, you'll know that now. Um, so let's see, that is the queued licenses now in current and checkout detail. Um, in the area of groups, we've added a couple of new things here that I think are pretty pretty exciting. So one of the ways to create groups is through Active Directory, and there is an auto sync option now. Um, let me go show you that. So again, under groups, you can uh, create a group from Active Directory, and um, there is this new box here, auto sync frequency. This kind of explains what it is. And this, this gives you the option of selecting how often do you want that group synchronized with your Active Directory. Is it daily, uh, daily weekly, monthly, or never? Uh, totally up to you. But if, so if you've created your groups using Active Directory, then you probably want to set this to uh, you know, daily or weekly. And it'll just sync up the, the group, make sure it's still current. <clears throat> So that's your group from Active Directory. Uh, group name is now included in activity export. This is, again, not really something I can show you. Uh, one of the options uh, under batch is the user activity export. And uh, we did not include group names in the past. Let me just show you where that is at. So if you go to batch, there's this button here, user activity export. And um, this gives you the ability then to add Active Directory information. If you click this box, it will add the Active Directory information in that file. Again, uh, user activity export is an export option. It's the only thing you can do is you can export all the information about a given tool or tag. Uh, you can export it into Excel or you can export it into JSON. JSON is a, is a format for the getting it into uh, Tableau or, or Splunk or some of the other um, analytics tools out there. But if you're dumping it out now, um, you have the option of uh, including in that information the group name that the user belongs to. So if you have a, a need for that, that's now included. 
Um, there's a bunch of component upgrades and, a, and some bug fixes. Let's go to the component upgrades next. So for the Windows customers, um, 9.4 includes an uh, Apache update to 2.4.46, a Tomcat upgrade to 8.5.63, and a PHP update to 7.4. These uh, are not included in the Linux update. I guess there was some issue with uh, the compatibility of these uh, in Linux. And uh, if you need to upgrade the components in Linux, contact support at teameda.com and we'll figure out how to get those components upgraded. But um, the Linux update does not include these, just the Windows update. And then um, as far as bug fixes, these are the bugs, bug fixes in 9.4. Um, the LAM renewal alert, there was a bug in the LAM renewal alert. So LAM renewal, that's your contract renewal date. That's tied to this time right here, that expiration date. Um, there was apparently a bug. Um, I didn't know there even was one, but somebody reported it and we fixed it so that your renewal alerts for your contracts um, will be, uh, be working, I guess, correctly now. Um, there was a par there was a parsing problem, not just with windshield, but for some of the um, um, short checkout par parsing coming out of log files. Okay, so the parsing is only for lo for log files, uh, debug logs for for FlexLM, uh, but there's a number of other uh, types of logs like windchill. Uh, uses a, a log to record the checkout information and uh, we have a parser then for those log files and so this parser was fixed to include uh, short checkouts. There was a bug there having to do with short checkouts. Short checkouts would be um, if you had applications that might take out a license and, and re return it in 10 seconds, you know, those could be missed in your normal um, well, LM stat cron interval, but uh, normally there those are recorded in the in the log files. So the parser now picks those up. Um, there was a bug in the denials graph. For those of you that were tracking denials and trying to plot uh, a graph of the denials, there was a bug there. It wasn't there were some scaling issues and uh, uh, like naming conventions that weren't uh, working properly. But now the denial graphs. Uh, are working properly. Um, create backup. There was a backup bug. You know, we have the automatic backup, right? You can back up your LAM UM database every whatever frequency you want, seven days. I guess on the Linux side, there was a bug there. Uh, that's been fixed. Um, there is a report, a batch report, it's called Feature Usage by Tag, that had a bug in it, and it wasn't showing max licenses. Um, that's not something I can show you, but I, I can show you where the feature usage by tag uh, report is at. If you go to usage batch reports, so you have two here. You have feature usage by tag table and feature usage by tag graph. So what this allows you to do is create a, a batch report, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever, um, of a given tag using selected features. Let me just show you, if you're not familiar with this, uh, it's kind of cool. Um, again, it is only a um, batch report. So at this tag, I have a whole bunch of features. And so I might only, I want to create a batch report with only a set of features. So I can select only the features that I want to have in my batch report. And you can generate those either as a, a graph or as a table, um, if I go back uh, to here, uh, the table will also give you all the user information. So this is a much more detailed report, uh, whereas this is just a set of graphs. So you're going to get a set of graphs on all those features that you just picked. Um, and again, this is a, um, a batch report. So it's weekly, monthly, quarterly, however you want to set those up. But there was apparently a bug uh, in that in that it was not showing the max licenses, the capacity, uh, but now it is showing the capacity in those reports. Um, we had a problem with triads. Uh, some of you who use triads 
which is three servers. That's redundancy, you know, on your license server. Uh, you have three of them kind of linked together, and if the first one fails, it goes to the second one. If the second one fails, it goes to the third one. Really unnecessary nowadays, but uh, there was a bug where we would, if the first one failed, we wouldn't automatically uh, move over to the second server. So we fixed that uh, so that your triads uh, are working as advertised. <laughs> and then lastly, there was a, a bug uh, in PO cloning. So some of you are using our system to generate POs. And you know, if I go back over here to my licenses, um, you know, I can clone a PO and create new line items off of an existing PO. Um, and I, I believe under here there's, um, I don't know, there's there, somewhere you can clone a PO and that wasn't working before. Our field, a specific field or two was not cloning over. So add a new, no, we're not gonna do that. I think the cloning would be click on the PO. Yeah, so the, I clicked on a PO number and there's a clone button now. So basically you create another line item off of the same PO, but for some reason, all the fields, all of these fields were not uh, transferring over to the new cloned version, but we fixed that. So now if you do want to clone POs, create new line items from the same PO number essentially, um, you'll have all the fields. So that is pretty much it, I mean, 9.4 was not a huge release. Uh, we think we added some functionality that's been uh, asked for. Uh, I know a couple customers have, uh, have wanted some of the stuff. So um, that's pretty much an overview. I would be happy now to open it up to questions. Just unmute yourself and ask away. Hey guy, you can hear me? Yes. Who is that? Uh, uh, this is Brian Bruder. How are you doing? Hey, Brian. Hey, good. So when I do the update, will it update all the Apache and stuff? You're in Windows, right? Yes. Yes. Everything that I yeah, talked they, about, all of your, uh, all this stuff will be updated in in uh, nine point four. Okay. So, um, so should we go ahead and do the update now? Uh, yep. Or with the next version? Nope. Okay. Go ahead. It's, it's easy to yeah. do. Now we we have a new download function. You go to our website now. You, yep. you make sure you read the directions because you're going to need a password. The passwords are, is in that direction in the directions. But yeah, basically, it's, it's yeah. pretty. You don't have to go to an FTP site anymore. You just go to our website. Um, if I go to my uh, our website real quickly here, let's go to uh, tmedia.com. For any of you that that do want to update, they're under there's right here. So you go to resources and go down to customer downloads, and when you click on that. It's going to ask you for a password. That password is in the instructions that were sent to you. And then when you put in the password, it's going to give you a list of all the possible updates as well as full new packages, which you're only going to be looking, Windows customers are going to be looking for the 9.4 Windows update. Linux customers are going to be looking for the 9.4 Linux update. That's all you, you really care about. And you click a button and it'll download the package for you. <clears throat> that's, that's kind of new in 9.4 too. Any okay, other? Good. Yeah, I, I got it downloaded already. But. Oh, okay, super. Perfect. Yeah. Any Thanks other time. questions? Come on, you can let me off the hook that easy. I can't believe I that was that good. There's no questions on nine point four. Maybe I put everybody to sleep. <laughs> Well, well, let me ask you another question then. Okay. When you say when you say uh, the reporting on the license expiration, it will only go to the the um, assigned user, uh, the person that's re the responsible oh, are you, person. Are you talking about the renewal alert? Yeah, the renewal okay. alert. It will only okay. go to the responsible person. Well, it's up to you. You can do it either way. If you go to uh, set, I think that was under settings, right? Yeah, under yeah. settings, global settings, you go to global update, global settings. There's just one little trigger here, and if it's if it's disabled, the alert is going to go to everybody in the list who's checked off email alert. 
if uh, it's enabled, if this is enabled, then the alert is only going to go, the, this is the renewal alert we're talking about, not the license key expiration, but this is the renewal alert, right, which comes off of, uh, it's this, this value right here, I can get over here, it's this value here in this column. Um, it'll only go to the person over here that you have indicated as the responsible person for that line item. So if this line item was coming up for renewal and it would only go to me if I had that setting enabled. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Um, now I'm going to ask for another enhancement. Can you get it so you can have the, some like another, a backup person? That's, that's That would be my problem. Well, you, now. the only way to do that would be to add another line item with the backup person. Right now, we can only have one responsible person per line item. Exactly. So if you wanted another person to have, you can make another line item. Just don't put in, you know, you don't want to be tracking the usage on a second line item, you know, the same thing. So all you have to do is, you know, when you're when you're doing the line item, don't put in, you can either not put in the license server ported host information on that second line item with a new name, um, or you can just turn off this license type down here. If you leave the license type null like that, like nothing in there, then it, it's not going to try to record usage on that that line item. So it's just another little trick there. Okay. Well, maybe as an enhancement, you could add an, an administrator. You mean add, add the ability to add more than one responsible person? Either that or, 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 okay, so it goes to the responsible person, but maybe somebody that's checked off back in the settings. Yeah. Go back to the settings. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're here. I'm, try I'm trying to remember. I'm not an expert here, that's for sure. If I'm a um, admin, maybe yeah. you could have it go to the responsible person and all admins. Would that make sense? Uh, I, I, anything's possible in software. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. Just, just a thought. Just a thought. I'm sure Alfred is writing something down. Alfred's yeah. probably busy putting that into our schedule. <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks. Thank you. I'll, I'll be quiet now. Let somebody else talk. <laughs> thanks, buddy. <laughs> Uh, somebody is sent in a chat here. Let's just see. Hanny. Oh, Hanny. Hi, Hanny. Uh, should I create an account? What does that mean? Hanny, you're on your cell. I don't know what you mean. Should I create uh, To download the tool, should I create an account? Oh, no, 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 no. You just, to download the update, you just go to our website, go to the Team EDA website and go to, just click resources and go to download. It says customer downloads. I think that's what it said there, right? Uh, so it doesn't require creating an account. No. Password because there's a password. The password. That's why I see. If you look at the instructions attached, when I sent out the announcement of the update, there was, there was instructions attached. Look at those instructions. That gives you the password. And oh, I see. Need, okay. Yeah, you're going to need that because all you're going to do is click on, whoops, press the wrong button here. You're just going to go to resources, create down or customer downloads, and that's going to mm -hmm. ask. Now it's going to ask for that password. You need to have that. So okay. No, you don't need to create an account or anything. Okay. Do uh, I am running in an older versions uh, of uh, Lemon? Do I need to? Can I go directly to 9.4.2? Well, that's a good question. Um, it depends on what old version you're at. What are you currently at? I have go to check. I think it's nine point three, but I may be yeah, mistaken. Yeah, no, that's fine. If you're in, at least if you're at nine point oh uh, or above, you can go right to nine point four. Is that a correct statement, Alfred? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so if you're below nine oh, then yeah, you should contact us and do an. You might have to do an interim update to get you up to nine oh, and then you can go to nine four. But I think everybody's okay. everybody's above nine oh now. I believe. And I also want to say thank you for your business. We really appreciate it. And if you ever need to get a hold of us, you know, support at teameda.com goes right into uh, the support mechanism here. And or if you need to call me, feel free or email, you know, me anytime you want. We're always here to, to listen or help you. With that said, thank you so much for, for coming um, and We'll talk soon.